It's the Craggy Rugby Podcast. It's the Edinburgh game. We're back in the sports ground. I'm up in the press box and I've got Dave Finn with me, Dave. It is a beautiful day here in the sports ground. We've got a fully loaded Edinburgh here. They've got every, everybody. Darcy Graham is going to make his first appearance here. That lad scored 13 tries in 11 games this season. You've got Buffelli, who Williams has always gone on about. has been one of the most exciting players you're ever going to see. His first time in the sports ground. And we've got Connacht needing a win. What do you reckon? It's a tough one to call. I mean, they are extremely well loaded. I, I wasn't expecting Kinghorn. Uh, I'll be absolutely honest with you. Um, Gilchrist um, is back. Everything about them say it looks like they are coming for a make a big statement. They can keep WP Nell on the bench and bring him on later on. We are down our two players, but given what I saw at Gary Ringrose's house, I'm quite happy a couple of our guys aren't back. <laughs> Everything on paper points to Edinburgh coming out of this. But Ex- except the fact that they haven't won an away game in since yeah, before Christmas. And that gets into people's heads. Yeah. There's logical reasons why you'd say Edinburgh win. There's very good logical reasons why you think Connacht win. The, the fact is that our a lot of our players are down this week. They're new down. Are the experienced guys, not just Jack, but Bucks, Josh Murphy, guys who would be extremely important in, in a game like this. So, but as I said to Tommy Farrell during the week, you're in charge of your own destiny, and that's what Connacht have to be. We are in charge of our destiny, so therefore they need to go out and, and prove that. And they should. I'm talking about the crowd. It is a massive crowd. They have sold it out for the first time. They sold out a right. URC game since I don't know when. And the queue, as I was walking in, yep. the queue was miles long. It was incredible. First game in two months, yes. 3 p.m. on a Saturday. It's yes. a reasonable time. It's not too early, so it's people have to put people off with travelling. It's not too late. It puts off people who are travelling with kids. So, yeah. Dave, it's half-time. Connacht lead 20 points to 7. All the stats show that Edinburgh should be winning this game 20 points to 7, but Connacht are the ones doing it. Yeah, I, I'm always very wary of people who rely too much on stats. It just means <laughs> they're not watching the game. This is a game that's been entirely, um, performance is entirely built on some of the best defence I've seen from Connacht ever. We have absolutely stopped their mall, which is impressive. They've thrown an interception pass. They got very easily stepped for Carl Forge try. Um, we yeah, what, them a, what, a, what a try that was, though. Oh, it's a beautiful guy. Four yeah, players. You, if you four haven't players. seen it, he's, and believe me, that's Carl Ford, 21 year old, but and he, it's four internationals he's done too. He's made Papelli, who is not an idiot, look like he's never played fullback in his life. Um, great. And, and drag Kinghorn over the line from and, five meters yeah. out. I think the interception try is huge. They got the wrong side of uh, Ben Whitehouse. Yeah. Uh, eight, eight penalties given away. They give away yeah. three. Um, um, Keen Prendergast is on a warning. Um, and we've just given away a penalty. And it looked like they, they had just scored. Yeah. We gave away three more penalties in a row. But that intercept I, was I, incredible. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. Whitehouse. Look, I can't complain about it. Again, it's a normal thing. I can't complain about the penalties we're giving away. You are seeing things that Edinburgh are doing. You're thinking, that's a penalty for us. So any chance you could blow over that. He can only blow what he sees. And I like to have no complaints with any of our penalties. I should be more worried than I am. I should be more nervous than that. There's something not right about Edinburgh. They all they look very, very good, but they're off, and that's allowing us to dominate the game. Well, this, is, this, this, this is the question I asked Pete yesterday. Like he's, I said, you know, what's it like to get so many people back in one lump straight from the Six Nations? He says you won't know till the game because sometimes they click, sometimes they don't, and it doesn't look as though they've quite clicked. No. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I mean, I think they've a bit more to bring off their bench than we do in terms of experience. It's fascinating. It's wide open. This is one. Next try, next score is huge in this game. It either wins the game for us or it makes the last half an hour really, really twitchy. OK, Dave, what a game. It's Connacht win 41-26. It's just, there's just so much to talk about. Uh, wow. Um, first of all, it went on forever. Yeah, yeah two-hour game. Uh, absolutely. Which will drive the traditionalists mad. Um... It was both. I'm sure if you weren't an Edinburgh or Connacht fan, you'd have thought it was. It was probably bonkers. Yeah, it's. I am. Look, I'm. I'm nil colours and mass. I'm struggling to get my head around it. We should have lost. I would have thought we were going to lose on 58 minutes, and we've ended up winning by 14. And we shouldn't have given them a bonus point try because that was a mistake by us. There's three cards you can't argue with. You can't argue with any of them, one, except no. maybe Conor was unlucky to be the person. Well, he was the person, yeah. He was yeah. A, but See. I think the Buffelli yellow card changes the game completely. 
For me, for me, I know we scored all the tries and we looked great going attack, but for me it was about the defence. Oh, Christ. The defence was amazing. Immense. Like, I know we let four tries in, but the last one should never have happened. One was with 13. Yes, one was 13. That was the one where they just sort of, 13 and, and, men pushed us over the line, but yeah. I thought our defence was brilliant today. I thought it was amazing. I think that the, um, it was, and it was a physical. Well, we were giving away 20 kilos in the pack. I think we were giving 20 away. I think the only person we were heavier than. I mean, even even you look at the out, I mean the out half comparison. King on is 6'4. Hawk is many things. He's not 6'4. Nope. Young McNulty is smaller than Buffelli. Uh, By the way, McNulty had his best game ever for Connacht today, I thought. Absolutely. They didn't give up. They tried, they tried, they tried. And I do well, think. Well, a that team that has 366 international caps, you would expect them to come along and playing against a team with one international cap and think that they're going to beat them and they did like well, they, they had, were, at, like they had so much possession back, and territory we're back to confidence we're back to yeah. confidence yeah. This, I mean we, we've been I know some of the fans have not been happy with the last two performances but sad the performances feel the points yes. I mean let's, let's, let's be frank about it I was at a game last night which extended an unbeaten run for Galway United and it was their worst performance I've seen but they, they won. won they yeah. won they're six points clear we won. We've gone up the table. Now we're relying on a couple of games later on to see where we finish at the end of this. But we will be no worse than eighth at the end of this at the end of this round, even if the two games go against us. And they shouldn't do. Ulster should should beat the Bulls. I'm they not really going to make. No, I'm not going to make anything. So I didn't have. I didn't have the lines down to beat. Um, no, I didn't have that. No, not, not by and any I'll be stretch. frank with you. I did. To be fair, I thought I didn't. Well, actually, I didn't have Connacht down to beat Edinburgh. To be honest, it's my. It's, it's the best ten quid I've ever spent because I'm very happy to see my ten quid going to the bookies but, uh, while Connacht play like but that. Absolutely has been. That was entirely based on that first half day. They feel. They feel. They will feel disappointed. They're going to get a bit of a grin and. Um, on Monday about some of the day and about the discipline because you can't go down to 13 men at some point do you, that's, not, that's not a high, that need, cannot be habitual I need to think about I need to, to not think about this game for about 20 minutes and then I'll be able to think about it because it's just, just yeah actually it's, you know, I might do overload <laughs> yeah I might, I might go down to Marty's after this yeah, and, yeah, and, and might, keep might, this, this finish might finish in Marty's because I definitely need to drink after <laughs> this to try and put that all together because now we've had hang on a second Packy's down there Packy, Packy, come up all right, sorry, sorry, folks. It's uh, Pack was down in the crowd. I didn't realize he was available, so we're just going to get him up to have us a quick word and get yes. his thoughts. We're still up in the in the uh, press box. Well, Packy, that was that was a bit tough, wasn't it? What are you doing? The press box. <laughs> he had, had a prawn sandwich. I had a prawn sandwich because I thought it was in the press box. I better have a prawn sandwich. Let's make my own prawn sandwich because, like, you know, celiacs don't get catered for in most of the uh, stadiums but that's, that's okay I'll, I'll, if I am going to cater for myself I might as well make it a prawn sandwich and to be honest that was a prawn sandwich the result it was it was class it was class great game uh, really enjoyable yeah it's the benefit of these uh, beautiful uh, 4G pitches <laughs> absolutely yeah, absolutely were you expecting this because I wasn't no no uh, no no who was I don't know if anybody was expecting that but um, do you know when you're thinking about the game all week I was kind of saying geez I wonder and then when I saw the Edinburgh team I went who yeah. I just with the injuries and that, but um, but it just all right. Look, I have to say it. When you back youth, yes. look at Shane Jennings did down here and or <laughs> yeah, McNulty yeah, yeah. the game he had. It just you right, got best you got, game we were saying best game McNulty's had for us. I know. In fairness, it, it is it is by far. But but when you back them and you know that's what you're left with. We've seen it time and time again. So uh, I'm delighted for those guys. Yeah. Yeah. When you consider we're missing Bundy, Mac, Beelham, Jack. Like there's other players missing as well. I just can't think of who it is at the moment. That's against a team with 366 caps, international caps. That's who they were playing. They actually played really well. Like, yeah, they, they were they were top class. There's um, it's all about intent. Well, that's it. Like yeah. we're it's it's setting us up. Okay, we'll take a break here. Here's the post-match press audio. Andy, um, was that the performance that you've been looking for this season in terms of an 80 minute effort and really not losing concentration at any stage, sticking at the plan? Yeah, I think that's probably our best performance of the season. Um, lots to like on it. We said pre-game that uh, you know, the game was going to be won on defence and I thought um, right from the the opening kickoff, you know, we give away an accidental uh, offside, so it's a scrum, and we got to defend, and we did, and then we give penalties, and we go to the, they go to the corner, and we defended. So, so much, so much character shown out there today, which then led, I think, to um, some really uh, confidence growing and some really good accuracy in, in some of our attacking stuff. So, really proud of the boys, and 
um, potentially our best performance of the season. It's come at the right time of the season. I mean, it's, it's you've got a pathway, but the pathway's got a bit easier now to top eight in, in URC and must give you confidence going into next week as well. And you've got players to come back and mix in. It's a pretty good situation. Yeah, no, it's a great situation. I said it's um, you know winning. Winning definitely gives you confidence and gives you belief. And uh, you know we're on a, a, a bit of a, a winning, winning run at the moment, which is good. So. Um, we know, though, Benetton's going to be a tough game. You've got to go away uh, to Treviso and, and try and knock them off, which is never easy. So, listen, we'll, we'll, um, we'll enjoy this win tonight uh, and over the course of the weekend, and we'll come back in and get ready for, for Benetton come Monday. In the defence, um, they say sometimes it's about attitude more than anything else. But was there a harder edge to that Connacht performance today? The mistakes were closed down. It was good communication on the field as well, it seemed. People were organised and there didn't seem to be that drop-off that has caught you on a couple of occasions this season. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I thought um, I thought our back row was, was exceptional. Um, I thought our centre pairing was exceptional. Um, you know, again, our set-piece functioned very, very well. Uh, two war tries. Um, some of our, our mall defence was probably the best I've seen all year. So there, there was there's so much to like there, William. And as you said, there, there was probably a. I can always tell when you see Connor Oliver in the in the change room before the game, and he was right up for that one, and he sort of leads the charge for us a little bit. But I thought he was brilliant today. And the bench worked very well. Mm. Uh, they all came on. It was a sort of high tempo game that sometimes can catch players coming on, but they all hit the ground running. Um, that. That maybe seemed to slow Edinburgh down. Their bench didn't work as well. It's it's a it's an in integral part of the game at this stage. It's huge. Yeah, it really is. You, you know, it's always going to take. Well, if you're going to win and win well, you need 23 players to be able to do that. And uh, you know, just a, a shout out for for two blokes in particular. I thought uh, Shane Jennings, who hasn't had a lot of opportunity this year, I thought he was just brilliant. You know, to, to steal two balls, one off Billy Matter, and then chase it and steal the next one. I just thought. Was outstanding, so really pleased and proud of him. And and uh, and the other bloke's Tom Daly, who, you know, his natural position is not ten, and and neither is David Hawkshaw. His natural position is twelve. Both are boys, but um, uh, Hawks did a job for us for sixty minutes. Then Dales came on, and, and I thought he he showed real real confidence in his in his performance out there today. So really pleased for those two men in particular. A lot of discussion this week about uh, you know some of the new players that are coming in. There's a lot of excitement about that, but. There should be a real. Is there going to be a real buzz here now? You've you've got a European window uh, next Saturday, uh, but URC, you're in prime position to be still playing rugby in late April or early May. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's you know it's exactly where we want to be. You want to be in that. You know we said at the front end of the season we want to be in the knockout stages of both competitions. So we are for uh, for Europe. Um, we're yet to for, for URC, but a win like that today. Definitely helps us in that, but you know, still two games to go, and we've got to try and get two wins to guarantee that. So we're in a good position, mate. But as, as we as we know, a week's a long time in sport. So I said we'll enjoy that one, and we'll uh, we'll get ready for for Benetton next week. We might see a couple of the internationals back for that. That's yeah, sort of game. Yeah, no, we've we've got both Bundy and Mac coming back into the squad, which which is really important for us that we get our our most experienced players and international players back to add value. And that's the most important thing. You come in and add value, and um, uh, yeah, make sure you, you can take your learnings and your experience out of that international campaign, which was brilliant, not only for those men but but for Ireland in particular, and uh, add value for for, for Connacht with that, which will take us hopefully to another level. Keen Prendergast was involved with that. He was in the thick of it. I thought he was brilliant. He was, yeah, I know, thought treatment a couple of times as well. Yeah, he, he copped a couple of heavy whacks, but he's just a, he's a, he's a big body boy. He's bigger this year, stronger this year, and um, I know he's cranky with a couple of his penalties, but uh, uh, that's the fight in the young bloke. You know, you you don't mind that. You you you'll, um, you'd much prefer to see a bloke having a real go because he's a competitor than not having a go. So. He got his hand slapped, wrist slapped at the end of, at, at half time there, and he was good in the second half. I find Oren McNulty, who is another player who we haven't seen an awful lot of, he looked. He, he brings a certain dynamism and also a fair bit of strength to that position, and he did look well settled today. The, the whole thing, it, I, it struck me commentating on it, the Connacht were calm all the way through. Yeah. And sometimes that's something that maybe. We, we kind of aren't, but today there seemed to be a, a focus and a calmness to everything. Yeah, I think um, 
Uh, and I think you're right. I, I, I think a real compliment needs to go to, to Pete Wilkins. He, you know, since and and you know, there's calmness around the squad now because there's clarity around the squad. What are we doing? Well, Pete's the head coach, and he's the head coach going forward next year. And uh, you know, I think one of the brilliant things with Pete is the messaging that he gives, and it's people know exactly what is required of them. And uh, I think the announcement of Pete a few weeks ago, the announcement of some of these players. People are starting to work out there's, there's security here and there's, there's a, a very bright future here and that brings positivity too. So I think what you saw there today is a combination of all those things but a, but a real real compliment to the way Pete's managing that and the other coaches, but, but Pete's leading that from the front. I mean, you said the calmness. I don't know if the crowd will calm when you're down to 13 men, but I know, I don't think, there's no such thing as being able to train for when you're down to 13 men, but where does that calmness come from? I mean, not just Pete, but how do you tell the guys that not to panic in an obvious situation? Well, you know, we, we were surprised up in the box that we've gone with a six-man scrum. You've got WP Nell on there and a few other pretty handy footballers, and we're thinking this is the height of arrogance, but we've gone six men against their eight, and you could see them have a good shove but a really good strike from F and JB picks it up and goes. And it just, again, there's a confidence amongst the group, you know, and, and that's probably what you're seeing there at the moment. You know, I, I think I've said to you, Blake, for the last month or so, I think the way we're training has been exceptional. And again, that's a compliment to, to Pete, to Mikey Kiley, to, you know, Mikey's the head of athletic performance, but to our other coaches, there's been a real energy. And that field gives us the ability to do that. You, know, you, you, have a, you have a look at the bottom pitch here, what we would normally be training on, mm. and you wonder why come the business end of the season, previously we've probably been a little bit slow because you can't move on that thing. But what a brilliant uh, asset Connett now have, and, and fair play to Willie and the board for, for putting the, the money into that because that now is going to allow us, give us the one certainty that we can play this the exciting brand of footy which the longer you train on that, the more you train on that, the more confident you become with it, and we're starting to see that in our performance. Boys put their hands up today, which was Andrew Orr and uh, Dermot, who had come back after injury. We know, you know, no one is walking back into things simply because they're in name. Does that I mean that must be a great position to be in? That you know you've got options, and everybody who's putting on the green jersey over the last few weeks has really stepped up to the mark. Yeah, brilliant. You know, it, it's. Um, you know, poor I, I call out for Shane Bolton. I thought Shane was brilliant in, in Dragons, and and we actually named him in that team. Um, he was going to be starting. He comes out here on Tuesday, trains, and picks up a really nasty injury. So who steps up? DK needs to come in, and then and then Tiernan pulls out. So Porcher, you're going to have to, Oren, you're going to have to come up, and Jenna, you're going to have to come up. But then they get their chance, and they were brilliant. So yeah, listen, there's a real confidence amongst the group, which is which is healthy. Um, blokes are taking their opportunities, which is healthy, not only for this year, but for the future. And uh, make sure you get a ticket for the Cardiff game. It should be beautiful. And today, huge win for Connacht. That was a must-win game for both sides. And Connacht have come out on top, 41-26. You must be thrilled. Yeah, delighted. Um, delighted with how we won it as well, I think. You can see how much it meant to us. Our, our D at times was just incredible. Um, Fair play to the lads. Um, backs against the wall with 13 men, and we still come out with a however many points win we had. Um, so yes, yeah, all credit to, to the 23. Um, had a few injuries during the week as well, and lads stepped up. So absolutely delighted for the for the whole squad. It seemed to be a harder age to come out today. There was a lot of calmness out there when commentating on the game. Um, you just seemed to make good decisions, and the resets were very very sharp. I mean, they tried to get the ball wide, but they, and eventually you just closed them down. Yeah, I'm delighted it looked like that, because it, it, to us it's controlled chaos, and, but that's why you play rugby. It's a chaotic game, and it's a fast game, especially today with the weather and, and no wind and go. I absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, I don't even know, and our, our, attack, our attack never got going, but um, I think the breaks in play and Kind of when it got a little bit, a little bit frantic, we had a little bit more of an edge. I thought, um, especially in that first half. I don't know how many times now our discipline wasn't great. Um, we'll have to look at that, but I think it was, it was the effort of our of our D won us the game. First half, Edinburgh had sixty six percent possession, but went in twenty points to seven down. I mean, there is a skill to defending like that, and then turning it quickly, seizing chances, half chances. I mean, the intercept was. That really put the boot into them at exactly the right time. I mean, it was just, was that a read or was that just, did you see it happening? Uh, yeah, like 
obviously I do I scout them um, there's always tells when they I think they went into the like a 21 player so they went two phases and then came back but look I, I pride myself on, on my brave D at the at the edge and I do it in training all the time and I'm just happy it kind of it came off today um, I, I would have covered whatever whatever they did but um, yeah as I said I was brave and, and got the reward for it uh, Players all over the pitch I mean Owen McNulty only starting really hasn't done play, hasn't played much Shane Jennings came on two rips um, the bench really bounced as Andy's always looking for. Um, you really, are, are Connacht starting to get where they need to, having maybe struggled a little bit earlier in the season, that now, at the business end of the season, you're you're ready to get it done? Definitely. Um, I think we're scoring tries as well. That's the main thing. Um, and that's what we're going out to do. We're going out to play play rugby. Um, I think the Dragons last week we weren't really happy, but we went into our shells a little bit, and today we were at home with a huge crowd um, and as you said there we are getting it there's lads it doesn't matter what age you are what cap you have you're coming in and, and you're doing a job as you said I thought Colin Ford as well has really um, has really upped his game and, and he's, he's nearly like a, a leader first in the back and at such a young age um, more so just the way he carries himself um, you have Tom Farrell then at the other at the other end of, the, of just showing his uh, experience so as I said there's injuries and lads just step in um, I thought Hawks were very good well at 10 um, he hasn't played there much. He's mostly playing at twelve. So yeah, look, there's, there's lads stepping up and, and growing our depth. Um, and as you said, there the business end of the se- uh, the business end of the season. There's like this huge games coming up, so we need everyone putting their hands up. Talking about tries, you're now level with Kieran Marmion in joint fourth place behind Fionn Carr, Tiernan and Matt Healy. Now, you're waiting to go to catch Matt Healy, but you have a three-year deal here, so you're yeah. getting up 158. You're also the first chronic player to score two hat-tricks in the one season. What's going on with these hat-tricks? There's been five in the last six games. I mean, we've the record is something like 12 in about 100 and I don't yeah. know how many damn years, and suddenly you've gone hat-trick mad. Yeah, I don't know, really. Um, I think it just shows when, when you start a game well, it doesn't matter who it is on, on our team, they, they grow in confidence. Um, I suppose that we probably lacked that at the start of the season, so it's just showing kind of where we are as, as a group. Um, and when someone starts well, we every, everyone gets back in behind them. But um, yeah, hopefully there's another hat trick next weekend. Certainly take it. Do you enjoy being captain? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've an unbelievable group here, and it's so nice to have JB um, as eight and nine combo because. He's as much as a leader. He's a better leader than I am. Um, I can look to him at every decision. Um, so it's kind of made easy for me. Um, but yeah, look, it's an honour to Captain Connacht and from Galway. And I think it's every young lad's dream to play for Connacht. And Captain is even, even better. Absolutely. Okay, well, there, well done. Thanks. Okay, there was a, a moment when Ushin has gone off. Connors hasn't. Connors actually can't get back on. There's a scrum for a knock on. And JB picks the ball up. And just takes off, and it just seemed to spiritually lift everybody. I mean, how there was a calmness when you were down to thirteen. I mean, what, 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 what were you saying to the guys, especially when you got that try? Just when it was fourteen, you thinking it's back to six points. How did you, how did you keep the guys calm? How did you keep them focused? Because there was the potential there for this all to have gone horribly pear shaped. Yeah, look, we spoke under the post after they scored. I think that that second try, um, we just said to just stick to it we just reset um, and I know it might sound like I'm making it sound easy but it wasn't easy but all we just said was just stick stick with each other um, we know it's going to be hard we tried to me and Hawks just spoke briefly saying let's try control the game so when the ball goes off the park let's slow it down try even to the clock a little bit and then we just kind of varied our kicking game a little bit um, I think Kinghorn and Feli they're full back they, if you kick wrongly to them they pin you back um, and that's what we didn't need so we just tried to keep it very simple um, very simple kind of wear down the clock and then wait for the lads to come back on and then when the lads came back on we kind of they gave us energy again the bench came on and we just kind of lit up again and um, yeah it was it was, it was it was a tense few moments but like it was a lovely feeling at the end of the game I mean, I mean we know Conor possibly wasn't necessary that he in and of himself was doing an awful lot wrong but had what had what had the referee been saying to you was was that was had that been coming had you been getting we know there have been warnings but I mean was he just unlucky that it happened to be him rather than he had done anything specific yeah definitely I think it was a period before half time he spoke um he spoke to me and he just said that 
we're giving away too many penalties, mm. especially around the breakdown. Mm. Um, and he said to have a chat to them. And when a referee says that, whoever makes the next infringement usually will. It's a more of a, a team yellow card than than Connor doing doing wrong. Um, but yeah, look, unfortunate they score a try and we get a yellow card, and then we kick off and we get another yellow. So yeah, but look, it just, it just shows the character of the team. Your backs are against the wall and, and you you bounce back. I mean, I mean, your second try, which probably one of the best tries we've seen this season, primarily because it starts with a guy in his second cap ripping the ball straight out of the hands of a former player of the season before he's hit the ground. I mean, that just must, again, it ends with the try, but how important is it to that guys like Shane come in and make do something like that and just don't seem out of place? Yeah, it's unreal. Um, and it shows the depth. Um, but Shane has come in the last year or two and, and he's impressed in training so I'm I'm a little bit surprised because it was so good what he did but I'm not surprised because he's doing it all the time and he's training real hard so like it's just it dries everyone on and we, we give him a mention in the dressing room there because when when you're back against the wall and you have someone come on that young and that inexperienced and show that little bit of heart um, it just lifts everyone yeah I know it's a different competition but how important given that there were injuries this week the team was rejiggled Obviously, what happened during the game itself, but you've come out with a five-point victory. Everything is going is in your hands for the for the league. How much of that positivity feeds into next week? And it, is it almost like you you can't wait for next week now, even though it is a different competition and it is away from home? Yeah, I don't think we're going to dwell too much on the different competition. We're going to kind of take the momentum we have. Um, but we've had momentum for the last couple of weeks. I know there was a little break with the internationals and stuff like that, but I think it's. It's get the the bodies that are that are injured back mm. and and kind of drive that. But look, I think with the lads that started today, we're very very happy. So really, like Treviso, I think I don't know how many players they have that that are internationals. And um, and I thought Italy were very very competitive over the Six Nations. So it's going to be a huge huge test over there. Um, right, looking forward to it, John. Okay, before I head off down to Murty's to finish this podcast off with, with Dave Finn, I've managed to grab Lindley McKenzie. Lindley, that's a great result. That keeps Connick season very much alive. Well, that was the most important thing, wasn't it? And I have to say, it's probably the best game of rugby I have seen here all season. Mm. And, and probably for longer, actually, to be honest. I thought it was a really scintillating game of rugby. I thought the skill level was really high from both sides. The intent was like 100%. It was all go from minute one, mm. you know? And I think it was a, anyone who came to that match, they were, you know... The, Royally entertained. They were absolutely so. And Connor certain, and not only that, but Connor then delivered the result. That made it even better. They certainly did. And looking at, you know, the first try from Carl Ford set it all off, didn't it? Like, what... What a try from the young man, beating four international players, leaving them lying in his way because he sort of crashed over. He, he, he's, a, he's an incredible young man, isn't he? Mm. And I mean, and really, I mean, I, the locals have, you know, and Corinthians have always known the talent that, that he, you know, that he has. But now he's actually delivering it on the best stage of all in Connacht. And I am sure that it'll be an even bigger stage one day. If he continues, if he continues like this, oh, certainly so. Because like you know, I always go back to that game against Italy. The under twenties were playing, and they were losing at half time in Dublin. And Ford came on in the second half, completely changed the game, totally dominated, and changed how the whole game was being played. Um, there's definitely something special about him, and there's definitely something special about this rugby team because to play against a team of that level, <laughs> there's go Seamus Harley Langton cycling home. Good man, fair play to him. Um, to play against a team that has. 366 caps I know I keep going on about it but you know that was a hugely uh, experienced team they were playing against playing some high quality rugby and Connacht never took a step back yeah I you know I think it's something that's been sort of we've seen it coming all season we haven't seen the complete Mm. sort of game from them but that was as close as it has come Mm. and what I really love about it to be honest is that you know the the coaches have been very patient with some of these youngsters and it's taken quite a, a while for them you know to develop and come through but now they're actually they have so much more they have so much confidence in them yeah. that possibly a lot of people myself included because we don't see them at training all the time mm-hmm. and they do yeah. and so i think that's what's so exciting is that the 6000 people who came here to the sports ground saw these young players a lot of, quite a few of them local, mm-hmm. which is really important. Yeah, Dylan Tierney Martin, another yeah, good game. Absolutely, and I think it was a real showpiece for for where Connacht Rugby is at. And I think it's taken, 
I think it's like, you know, Andy Friend is, you know, we know he's leaving this year, but isn't it great that it's coming to fruition at the right time for him? Yeah. That, you know, he is, he is going to enjoy, hopefully, some more success from his time here, and that, that is what he has developed. It certainly is, and just looking at the half-time score, um, Glasgow are beating Munster 28-0. Um, that means we can catch Munster because they have two trips to... They have a trip down to South Africa to play two games down there against teams who are fighting to stay in the, in the top eight, which means if Connor can get any sort of result against Cardiff, they could actually pass Munster out, which would be the first time since the championship winning season we finished above one of the other teams. I'm never going to get excited about Cardiff, I have to say. <laughs> well, look, if we can, if we can, if we can win that game, it'll be a six-game winning streak, which I we know, haven't done we, since but, the championship winning but season. But we have not had very good luck against Cardiff. No, no. So we I'm not, you know, um, I'll wait and see when that arrives. And but it's this has put us in a very good, has put Connacht in a very, very good position, I have to say. And you know, it's it's definitely extremely positive. It certainly is. Okay, thanks, Lindley. Right, I'm off to get a drink. I need a drink. I need some peas as well. And um, we'll finish the session with Dave and maybe one or two other people who are down in Marty Rabbits, the home of the Connacht clan, and the best place to get a drink and a meal after a match, even before a match. OK, that was uh, Andy Friend and Caelan Blade, quickly followed by Lily McKenzie. Now, Eugene, your thoughts on that game? I, I have to say, I thought it was a very good win. I it myself. I thought it rock solid. I, th I thought the defence was very rock solid. And I thought that, like, even... Uh, I'd say Tom Farrell had a very, a very good game in defence and even attack. And, and I've said that, like, the impact of the bench, I thought Shane Jennings was easy, our best player. But also even Tom Daly, like, he really made an impact. On, and that's what we really what we've looked for all season, like... As someone said in the England camp, it shouldn't just be about the starting 15, it should be about the bouncers, and we got that today, as you very well know yourself. I have to say, I'm very satisfied. If, if, if someone told me before the match, we got five points compared to one, I would have taken that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. oh, no question. No question. All right, let me see if Sean will, let me see if Sean will say something. Sorry. Sorry, I'm interrupting Sean. Sean, your thoughts on... Well, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal win. And Connacht looking as though they're not only going to finish in the top eight, they could finish close enough to being even at home. Yeah, no, 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 no today was great. Um, we're certain to believe that we shouldn't be losing games. Um, I think maybe his introduction of, of the likes of, likes of Peter Dooley, who's a hard nut, um, but even the likes of um, Carl Ford, they don't take a step backwards. Um, I thought Jim McGallan, Tom Farrell, tackle like dogs, tackling brilliantly. Mm. Our bounce was bounce. Shane Jennings was amazing. Yeah. But across the board, Conor Oliver, for a man who was not, he's not a huge man, he is big like, yeah. out of granite. Um, he tackles, tackles, tackles. We talked to Keen Prendergast in the clan bar afterwards. Yeah. And how he's in one piece is beyond me. He stood there and said, yeah, we'll go again. Yeah. There's a confidence and a belief there at the moment, which is huge. I was in the tent afterwards, talking to a few from Colin Cook, the as regards the staff, yeah. and they all commented, the buzz is back. Yeah. There's a serious buzz around. Maybe it's called Santiago Caldero. Yeah. There's a few more coming, but uh, there's a huge buzz, huge confidence, and there's a bit of an old dog there too. Yeah. But a great win today, uh, I, I thought, across the board. Like Edinburgh, what, 333 caps? Yeah. We had one? I know, no. I just, I, as I said, I just, corrected it with, I, I, I just corrected it with Eugene. It was 333 at the start of the season. It's actually yeah. 366 now. Well, yeah. yeah that's it. Makes Man. it even, even more impressive. <laughs> They've earned more since the match finished. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, of course, no, we, we, we did very well. Um, still is the point if we give them a losing bonus point. And so will they. But... Uh, Pre-game, it went from I was talking to you, Alan. It was minus eight, yeah. minus four, yeah. minus three handicap, and we just took it out. And we had, I think, our lads had fun today. Mm, they looked, they really enjoyed it. So, and six thousand people there. So, um, oh Jesus, roll on to Risa, roll on Karen, yeah, roll on whoever's next. Yeah. These guys. We we'll take all comers. We still have Mac Hansen to come back. We still have Bundyaki to come back. These we still have guys, Jack Carty to come back. These guys, the moment, <laughs> Finley Beelum. These guys, the moment, don't fear anything. No. And it's a great headspace. Um, 
No, happy days. Absolutely. Happy days. And they, they, like Andy made a point that the training on the pitch means that they're training at the same level as everybody else, if not better than everybody else now. And they've really got used to this pitch and they, they appear to love playing on it. Yeah, there's definitely... I mean, it wasn't that long ago we, were we weren't scoring tries. We were 14th in the table. Our attack wasn't functioning. Case to be made, the attack still isn't functioning at 100%. Um, <laughs> ah, look, it's, it's good. It's, it's not perfect. It's far, too much, far, far from perfect, but yeah, they'd be worried about the amount of penalties they're giving away. They're worried about the two yellow cards. Well, well you can say that. They give away eight penalties in the first half, one in the second half. Well, they improved their discipline. That's learning on the base, and that's another thing. That, back to that general calmness. Uh, they, they, they will find flaws because that's what they're paid to do. They are paid to be perfectionists and they will find flaws because it can't be perfect. If it's got perfect, then you don't have to do anything next week, which is an appalling way to go into any match thinking we're perfect. They're not. They know, but they know they're not, but they, they're aiming for a level of perfection and they will keep striving towards it. They may never get there, but they will try to improve incrementally week on week on week. But let's enjoy the buzz tonight. Yes. And like the team, let's worry about Treviso, let's worry about uh, about Cardiff on Monday. Tonight, let's celebrate about that. That was a really cracking game of rugby. Well, I can't wait to go back and look at it again because I always have to go back and look at these games again because it's very different looking at in the stand and then go back and looking afterwards. Well, now we're looking at a situation where we were worried at Christmas time what we were going to do for the end of the season. Now we're looking at, you know, Munster have lost. Connacht <laughs> are now within... We've got the same as William would go. Well, you know, it's all about wins and losses, Alan. We've got the same win-loss ratio as Munster do now. now. And I'd always come back and go, bonus points are important. They're still ahead of us because of bonus points. You know, it's not just a case of, oh, we're going for eight. No, we're not. Yeah, no, we're, we're, not going, we're going much higher up. We, we, we well, could, we could finish, I can't we stop you. Finish we'll, above. I can't stop you. We'll, we'll get four. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say who said that. I won't say who said. Even you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to the podcast the last day, fourth. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all coming in now. Exactly. Everybody laughing at me. It's great to have the points in the bags back in in September and October and November, but you can go completely off the boil. Um, if you're going to win things, you don't win things in December, October, November. Uh, we were off the boil. I'm not saying, but you're looking at some of the teams now. The teams that have momentum now will be the teams. So you're looking at Glasgow. Hell, you're even looking at a, you're looking at a Clinetley. You were an amazing run of form, and just but they 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 really did make a mistake back in um, back in the other far side of Christmas. But Leinster have been in form all season. Stormers are in form. We're in form. Glasgow are in form. We have the momentum. Most of were in form, but it's nice going to knock them back. But teams are dropping off. Sharks are dropping off. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, Lions are dropping off. Munster are dropping off. Munster are dropping off. <laughs> I was it's o nice. o and Ulster, you just don't know. Yeah. But you cannot, it's just coming to form at the right time. You don't want to leave it too late, but also you don't want to be too early. Well, we did it correctly in 2016. Maybe we're doing it correctly in this season as well. Right, I think we'll leave it there, folks. Oh, Shane wants to get a word in. Before we finish, the last, last word, last word in the podcast goes to Shane. Last word. Loose, cut it loose. Break out or nothing changes. Sad and confused. Don't wait until.